Are you working on a blog for your business? Want to know the hottest trends in social media or expert business tips for any small business owner? Let's hear from the go-to gal, Alisa Kamahort Page, co-founder and COO of blogger.com. In 2005, you and Lisa Stone, uh, Jory Desjardins, launched a women's conference for women who blog. And now today, you've got, what, 50 million women unique visitors to your sites, your properties. You're the leading participatory information and news network. What do you think is the it factor that you contribute most to the table that perhaps your partners don't? Well, I think when we started Blog Her, uh, we started by asking a question. Oh, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? Uh, we wanted to not just talk about the fact that women were blogging and that women were using social media and that women were in tech, but we wanted to show it. That's why we started with a conference. People showed up and you couldn't ignore the fact that 300 women flew across country to talk about this very early nascent technology. And after that conference, we said, what can we do for you? And so instead of building something and then figuring out how to lure people to it, we worked with the community and built with them what they wanted. So that meant building events that they wanted. We, that meant building blogher.com, the web service that they wanted to find out what other women were saying. And ultimately, a nice subset of women said, you know what, we wish there was a business model to this. We wish we could make money doing something we love and something we're good at. And so we worked with them to build that. When we started to make revenue, we started to pay our writers. When we started to make a little more revenue, we paid our writers and our participants a little more. So it was always something that we did in partnership with the women in our community. And I think that's different from most of the other women's media that you're going to see out there, including digital media. All right. Uh, prior to Blogger, you ran a marketing consultancy, I believe, called Worker Bees, yes. which, by the way, I love the title. <laughs> um, what was that milestone that was that an easy transition to, to where you are now? Well, I had always been, before Worker Bees, I had been in corporate tech and I had been in product management, product marketing for tech. And I had always envisioned my path being a corporate one because that was what my mom did. And she was kind of my role model. But when the whole boom and bust happened, I think something kind of snapped in Silicon Valley where people realized that you no longer was your job going to be your job for life. No longer might that industry be your industry for life. And that you needed to have a little something, something that was all for you. And now if you go and you hang out in the whole tech community in Silicon Valley, people might have jobs, but everyone's got a little something, something. They, they've got a hustle going on. They're trying to develop this app or develop this company. I never intended to go out and create a consultancy, but I had that idea. And I realized I wanted to develop it myself and not do it in the space of a company. And then when I met Lisa and Jory, who I met very serendipitously, um, we had this idea together and we knew we wanted to build it ourselves and not just have it be within the structure of somebody else's company. So I understand at blogger.com you handle the marketing, PR, events. What do you like most about it? Well, it's very close to the community. The events, we still call them the conferences, the community built. Just today, we launched our call for ideas for a 2013 conference. We need to have our finger on the pulse. Same with doing marketing. You need to have your finger on the pulse on what are people talking about? What will they want to talk about? And what I most love of all, uh, love more than anything um, around the PR aspect of what I do, there are amazing stories in our community. There are amazing women. And I get to tell their stories. And I get to get what I call regular people to understand what is happening in our space that is so exciting, that is so full of opportunity, that is so energizing. It's, it's you know, I can be passionate every day about telling another story about what women are doing to change their lives. All right, so which leads me to my next question. What about online communities? What are the biggest trends that you're seeing in your your sphere or else maybe on Facebook or Twitter? Well, I think the biggest trends, there's a few. Uh, I think everybody acknowledges that if you can't be consumed and connected and communicated with via mobile, you're missing the boat. Okay, we all need to be there. The second big thing is video. If you are not thinking about how to transition sharing your voice in video, not just text, you are going to limit your possibility. Let me just say that, you will limit your possibility. And the other thing for companies in this space is to think about how can you create a seamless experience from I want information about something, ooh, I like it, 
I want to share it with everyone I know and I want to buy it, but I want it to be as simple as saying, ooh, I like it, I share it, I buy it, I'm done. And that doesn't exist. It's combining content, curation, and commerce. For companies, that's the future. Smart. <laughs> I like it. All right. Uh, challenges, roadblocks. It's it's tough. It can be tough to be a, a woman out there. Um, what have you met in your, in your experiences, and how have you tackled it? Well, I think the thing is, you kind of have to be um, have some balls. <laughs> um, and I'm not going to say have some ovaries. You got to have some balls. That's okay. Got to just buy into that sexist biology right there. Um, and you know, in the panel that I just did. I said this, and that sometimes people say to me, well, I don't want to be a token. I don't want to be the person they invited because I'm a woman. And I'm like, oh, honey, you know you're not a token. Who cares if they think that's why they're inviting you? You're going to show up. You're going to do the job. You're going to kick ass, and you're going to erase their idea that you could have been a token to begin with. That will be like total recall. It will be gone. And um, I think you, you just have to, most of the women I know in this space, they totally acknowledge that there are obstacles, that there is sexism, that there are stereotypes, but you just keep fighting. You don't have any other choice. Have you got a theater bug? I understand you're on the board of directors of the 42nd Street Moon Theater in San Francisco. Is that right? That's right. I'm on their board. I was a theater major. And I moved to New York after college, and I still actually have my Actors' Equity Union card. Even though I haven't used it in 13 years, I still retain my union membership. Um, so, yeah, you caught me. <laughs> All right, last question. Any business tips that you recommend for businesses to keep up on the social media bandwagon? What do you recommend? Well, the first thing is listen. Go out there and listen. What are people saying? And the, the real, the thing, if I could convey anything, it's that you should not care about the A list. If you've seen some list of the most powerful and influential people, who cares? You need to find your A list, and that means who already cares about what you're doing or making? Who already is talking about you, or your competitor, or your market, or your industry? There are women and men out there who care about these things already. They're your A list. They're your brand ambassadors in the future. They're your potential to spread the word to their audience. There's no sense trying to get someone who doesn't care what you do or who you are to try and care. Again, don't try to lure people to you. Go find them your market and your community where they already are and join them. Don't interrupt them. Well, I'm liking that. I like that A-list. <laughs> Alisa Kamahort Page, co-founder and COO of Blogger, blogger.com. Nice to have you on our show. Thank you. Thank you for having me.